continuing here talking about inverse trig functions. I'm now going to talk about the reciprocal inverse trig functions. So our arc cosecant, arc secant, and arc cotangent. Arc um, cosecant can also be rewritten as key cosecant to the negative 1 of x. That's how it would look um, in some textbooks. Okay. But this notation isn't on the calculator like our sine negative 1 is. So in order to, to do a problem like this in our calculator, we would actually need to type it in as sine negative 1 of 1 over the x value. Remember how with the inverses we're plugging in a ratio and getting out an angle. So the reciprocal functions, the ratios themselves are reciprocal. So if we're doing the inverse function of cosecant, we're actually doing the inverse of the reciprocal of the x value we're plugging into sine instead, if that makes sense. Um, we can look at the graph quickly for this one as well. Just wanted to point out on your summary, which I haven't been doing along here, but the things I've been showing you, I've just been talking about the domain and range. Here's the arc cosine on the summary. And then we have the arc sine, domain and range. These other details are just kind of explaining in math language some of the things we've already talked about. And this we'll get into more detail as we go along. Down here we have our arc tangent, domain and range, which correspond to what I've talked to you about in the previous video. And then we're going to be getting to cotangent in a minute. So first of all, let's look at the back. If you notice the footnote, it says something about assuming the calculus-friendly ranges are used for this group right here. We're not going to worry about those. That might be something that would be handy to have next year if you take calculus. Okay. But for today, we're just going to talk about these domain and range values for secant. And I'm starting right now with cosecant. So just so you can see how this summary paper applies to what we're doing. All right, so for the arc secant, remember, or cosecant, sorry. Remember that the cosecant graph looks, has an asymptote here and here and here, and it has like these little parabolas that don't go lower than negative positive one at the top and no higher than negative one at the bottom. So something like this. When we use the inverse, again, we have to restrict it so that we're just using certain pieces. And for this one, it's going to correspond with sine. So we're going to, again, be using quadrant four and quadrant one. So it's going to be like that piece there and that piece there. So when we do the inverse of it, it will look something like this and this. Okay. So that helps us to see what our domain and range are. Our domain is anything from negative infinity this direction to negative 1 and then positive 1 to infinity course, because we are doing the inverse or by trading the domain and range. So negative infinity to negative 1 and then 1 to infinity. The range we are restricting and we're going to restrict it to quadrant 4 and quadrant 1 again. Again, even though I'm pointing to quadrant 3 and I'm saying quadrant 4, it's because these values in here are the quadrant 4 values because it's going from 0 to negative pi halves and then this one goes up to pi halves. So the range will be from negative pi halves. And we actually need to stop at 0. Why do we need to stop at 0? Because there's an asymptote right there. So it doesn't exist at 0. And then this one will be 0 to pi halves. This means that our answers, if x is positive, will be in quadrant 1, like usual. But if x is negative, then our answers will be a negative angle in quadrant 4. Okay, arcs. 
see camps is the inverse of secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine. So for that one, we're actually going to be using pieces of the graph from quadrant one, and then up here in quadrant two. So the domain for secant will be from negative infinity to negative 1, and then the range will be from 0, and this time the asymptote is at pi halves, so to pi halves, and then pi halves to pi. Um, again, this is also can be notated with the negative 1 notation, but to use your calculator, you're actually going to want to use cosine and do 1 over the x value that you're plugging in, or the reciprocal of the ratio for your calculator. Okay, so remember, if you plug in a positive x value, you're going to get an answer in quadrant 1, as always. But if you plug in a negative x value, then you're going to get a positive y value in quadrant 2. Just like cosine. Now cotangent is the tricky one. Cotangent inverse has to be, if you want to find it on the calculator, it has to be found by using tangent. But the problem you're going to see in just a minute here is that tangent, inverse tangent and inverse cotangent are in different quadrants for your negative x values. And so that means if you use a calculator to find the, the value of a negative x, then you have to switch it to a different quadrant. Let's first look at the graph for cotangent. The graph for cotangent looks like this between asymptotes. So we're just in quadrant 1 and 2 because we're just doing the values from 0 to pi. So the inverse will be something like this. There's an asymptote here and here. So your positive x values have positive y values, and your negative x values have positive y values, and it's quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So again, our domain, just like tangent, will be negative infinity to positive infinity. You can plug in anything. But the range will only be from 0 to pi. And I made a mistake in using that bracket there again. It has to be the parentheses because it does not include those values because of the asymptotes. Okay, so if your x value is positive, you're going to get a quadrant 1 angle that's positive. But if your x value is negative, you're going to get a quadrant 2 value, and your y value will be positive, just like it is for cosine and secant, or arc cosine and arc secant. So arc cotangent is also in quadrant 2. So now what I was saying earlier about making sure that your tangent angle, if you use a calculator, ends up in the right place, your calculator is going to give you a quadrant 4 angle for tangent. So then you have to change it to a quadrant 2 angle. So for negative x values, change your tangent value in quadrant 4 to quadrant 2 instead. All right, let's look at an example of that. And of course, both places we're talking about those inverses, right? So if I wanted to find the arc cotangent of negative square root of 3. I could do that by finding the inverse tangent, or arc tangent, 
of negative 1 over square root of 3, which is also square root of 3 over 3. That co corresponds to a 30 degree reference angle. So for tangent, your calculator, if you did this in the calculator, would give you a negative answer. So like negative 30 or negative pi over 6. However, that is not the correct answer for tangent, or cotangent, arc cotangent, because these are in quadrant 4. So in order to get the correct answer, we actually have to change that to a quadrant 2 angle. So our reference angle again was 30 degrees. So our quadrant 2 angle that's 30 degrees would either be 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6. So your y value is actually positive even though the calculator gives you a negative angle in the fourth quadrant answer is a positive angle in the second quadrant.